Hello makers and welcome back. Today I have yet another dot matrix clock idea to share with you. But first, what you see here are a couple of dot matrix clocks that I had been working on recently. This is the first one with Raspberry Pi Pico W with MicroPython. And the other one with ESP32 C3 and C++. Videos on these prototypes are already out and linked in the description below. But basically, although these differ in hardware and programming language, both are designed to be connected to an internet time server over Wi-Fi to synchronize the time which I think was a natural approach because many of the modern MCUs come with Wi-Fi capability and Wi-Fi is the most common mode of networking the devices. But today's approach is completely different. Here, the MCU is what is called RP2040 Zero and it is designed to use the same display as the first prototype, an 8-module dot matrix unit, as you can see here. Although the time is not synchronized yet, you can see that the display is the same as the previous one with standard 8x8 pixel numbers. But let's have a closer look at the rig. This MCU RP2040 has a significantly smaller footprint than the original Pi Pico W, as you've seen in the first prototype. and comes with no Wi-Fi. But instead, there's this new module attached to the setup, which is a GPS receiver with uBlock's new 6M chip, which is this one right here. And on the back side is an antenna connected with this cable to the PCB. With this GPS module, this prototype shows time reported by GPS instead of synchronizing with NTP servers. And hence, we do not need Wi-Fi anymore. I think it's a clever idea to build a clock with GPS technology because in the end, GPS is a system of satellites that broadcast not only their position, but also a very accurate time thanks to the atomic clocks inside each state light. In a word, the system is of space technology and of quantum mechanics all at once. That's an amazing science, but how do these consumer-grade GPS receivers work? Here's what I found. Let's look at the data stream from the module as shown in the shell. The data output from these modules are formatted in what is called NMEA sentence. They may look very strange at first, but in a closer look, they are just streams of numbers that represent time, coordinate, and other relevant information. And the beauty, I think, is that these sentences are written in plain human characters that we all can read instead of being in some highly coded bits and bytes. Thanks to that, we as watchmakers only have to write a program that picks out just the time component from out of all this data and send it to our display. Because of this simplicity, the code is going to be very short and minimal, as we'll see in a moment. But first, let's look at how the components are interconnected. Here's the RP2040 and the new 6M. 
power and ground is connected like this to the 3.3 volt and ground. For data, we use two wires for UART, one to transmit or TX, and the other to receive or RX. And of course, we have to add a display. The power for MAX7219 is connected to the 5V instead of 3.3, and the ground is connected to the same pin as the Neo 6M. For data, I use this SPI channel, and it is connected like this. Data to the TX, chip select to the CSN, and clock to SCK. Here's what it looks like in the real world. The GPS module is connected by these two wires. And these three are for the display. The power is on the other side with ground shared by the two modules. The wire to the new 6M had to be soldered because there was no extra header. Now, let's move over to the program which is done in Sony IDE. Before we begin, my code is largely from that of the Random Nerds tutorial which is linked below in the description. Okay. In the heart of this code is this MicroPy GPS library for processing the NMEA sentences. Other than that, we have this Max7219 library for the display. In the initial setup, there is this section for GPS object which is initiated with the name MyGPS. And this number 9 is the time offset for Korea. Next lines are for the display. Basically, they are the pin numbers used, and with that, a display object is created. After that, here's a short function that outputs a text to the display. And after that, we have this while true loop. In this main loop, data from the GPS is read by this line. My GPS object is updated. And our minute and second components are formatted into a text string, which is sent to the disp refresh function above to be dis displayed on the dot matrix strip. If you want to dump the raw NMEA sentences to the shell, uncomment this line. And you can print other GPS data by these lines, which you can choose to comment out. And that's it. If you compare this code against the previous one that uses NTP synchronization over Wi-Fi, this is strikingly short and simple. In the previous approach, we needed this initialization sequence for the Wi-Fi and the NTP synchronization function to set the internal clock of the Pi Pico. From there, we could format and display the time. Pair that to this program. We needed just these two simple lines to start the GPS module. And from there, raw data is fed through the library to parse it. And then we already got the time, which is ready to be displayed. We've even skipped the whole process of setting and using the internal clock of PyPico. Anyway, let's see it in action. After first plugin, it displays O0. My big question is, 
how well and how fast can it receive the satellite signals and lock the time from inside the room. At this place, which is about a meter away from the window, it wasn't able to lock any signal at all. But when I relocated it closer, like within a few centimeters to a window, the display started to show the time in just about a couple of minutes, and the module started to blink a few minutes later, meaning it has now locked and is outputting the position as well. It has to be placed near a window, but it isn't as bad as I first thought. I mean, it still catches the signal well when it's just reasonably close to the window, even without antenna facing outside or straight up. Interestingly, after completing the initial cycle, I was able to relocate the clock away from the window to a more convenient location, like the original position where signals couldn't be acquired. As you can see, even if the module stopped blinking, time still keeps to be displayed. This was because, as I found out, the module kept generating and outputting the time from its internal clock, even when it was completely blacked out. This made it less picky in terms of placement in a normal use in a house. Only keep it near a window for a short while, and afterwards it could be placed anywhere. After trying this project, I thought about the benefits of this approach of using a GPS as the clock source. First, it is foolproof, as it doesn't have to deal with connection problems that occur sporadically either with home Wi-Fi or with NTP time servers. This could be a big plus if you're making a gift item or a product to sell. Because, for example, if I made ones for others, I won't have to worry about or troubleshoot the Wi-Fi of the recipients. All they have to do to synchronize the clock is like putting it near a window and leaving it there until the time starts to show up. Of course, in practicality, we'll need some more work. For example, a button to adjust to a local time zone. But still, that's nothing compared against the troubleshooting the Wi-Fi. Second benefit of this project was that because it doesn't rely on Wi-Fi, we don't even need an original Pi Pico W. The RP2040 as I used in this project is easier to come by at just about two US dollars or less. Of course, I spent another 250 for the GPS module, but still it was quite a bit cheaper than the Pico W. So all in all, I found myself so much amazed and excited after trying this method, and I hope you're the same as much as I was. That's it for now, and thanks again for watching. Hope to see you again in the next episode, and until then, bye for now.